tournament. Each team has played one game. Canada and the Commonwealth of States have both won their first two games, so this game between them could well determine the winner of this year's Four Nation Championship. There's confirmation of the standing as it stays at the moment. The Commonwealth of Independent States there, well, they beat Czechoslovakia. Canada upset the host nation, Sweden, to get their two points. So this one, well, it's plenty on the line. The winners could well be on their way to winning the whole tournament. Nick Halling along with me, the great Britain coach Alex Dampier, and this is the one I think, Alex, that could well decide this tournament. Well, this has always been a real rivalry, uh, Nick. You know, ever since Russia has knocked Canada off uh, a number of years ago, the Canadian players take a lot of pride in trying to uh, beat, beat this uh, CIS team. And, uh, you know, today's not going to be any change. I think they have to go out there and really go at them. Well, there we see one change already. Trevor Kidd has gone in goal for Canada. Sean Burke, who performed such heroics against Sweden has been rested. Trevor Kidd, a 19-year-old who plays for Brandon Spokane, gets the start. And Alex, that's something of a surprise. Well, I think it's a good chance to have a look at this young guy. They're going to have to use him in uh, Albertville. So, you know, if, if he can do the job, then they know they don't have to uh, overwork Sean Burke. Canada in red, the CIS in white. The CIS having go goal, Andre Trefilov, who was outstanding against Czechoslovakia, and no doubt will be getting quite a workout. Canadi the Canadians look very sharp, particularly that number two line in their first game with Dave Hannon, Eric Lindros, and Dave Archibald. We'll keep an eye out for that line. Hannon 10, Lindros 88, and Archibald 12. I think, uh, Nick, Canada's going to really have to watch the penalties in, in a game against Russia. They get so emotionally involved, and Russia's got a tremendous power play. Uh, if they get caught up in penalties, that, that could mean the whole difference. And there we see Trevor Kidd getting himself warmed up big moment for him and there we see the official all three officials the referee and the two linesmen are from sweden that's never uh, something that goes in favor of canada either the european referees really come down heavy on the uh, canadian style of play here in the background uh, Nick are talking about the battle and I, I think that's what is in terms of in Canada this is what this is it's not a game tonight it's going to be a, an actual out no war for them every time they play Russia it's got to be that way because the uh, pardon me the CIS team is very uh, very strong and uh, they're a dominant force Lindros out on the line trying to feed Dave Archibald Archibald had the ball the puck rather taken off him but Lindros back with another opportunity and already we're seeing that line of Lindros Archibald and Hannon Still applying the pressure, the Canadians getting it across, Archibald doesn't quite pick that one up. It gets it back to Hannon and the Russians with a little bit of difficulty manage to get it away and here come the CIS on the counter-attack, Petrenko. Alexei Yazin in there as well and Lindros, the big 18-year-old, there he is. We've already talked about what impact this young man is likely to have over the next 10 or 15 years. Today's contact takes on... Carol's horrible cold. I have a lot of congestion in through here. I'm like it's going to blow off the top of my head. You took a cold pill, right? The effects wore off. The congestion's coming back. That's because ordinary cold pills can quit working after just four hours. Try contact. You'll get continuous relief for up to 12 hours. I felt wonderful. All my symptoms were gone. Everything dried up. It's for busy people who have no time to be sick. This is a great product, and I'm going to go out and buy it tonight. Today's contact, 12 hours stronger than Carol's horrible cold. Hi, I'm Sandy, and I just got to tell you about this great music offer I just received. It's called Greatest Original Oldies, and it's just packed with fabulous songs from the 50s and 60s. See you later, alligator. Here's the music offer you've been waiting for. Greatest Original Oldies. A special collector's edition of 36 number one oldies hits by the original artists. You'll get... I'm so crazy about this music, and this special offer has all the songs you remember. Only through this special TV offer can you get greatest original oldies for the incredible low price of $19.98 for the giant cassette set or $24.98 for the compact discs. So if you love 50s and 60s music like I do, you just gotta get greatest original oldies. 
What are you waiting for? Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-452-4300 or send 1998 for the cassettes or 2498 for the compact discs to Greatest Original Oldies, P.O. Box 210, Little Ferry, New Jersey. Please include $4 for postage and handling. And there's Dave King, who must be very pleased with what his youngsters have done so far, beating the host nation Sweden. And that was good preparation indeed for Albaville. Another win here. And I think he'd be a very happy man indeed. Doesn't smile much, Dave King, but if uh, the Canadians pull off a victory here, I think he'll allow himself a grin or two. In fact, none of you Canadians smile very much when you play nice hockey. Well, usually there's nothing not much to smile about. We haven't won much lately. Although Canada did well, I must say, in the uh, last tournament they played against the uh, European nations. They, at least they won it, and uh, it was a tough, tough contest. It's hard to say, really, uh, Nick, what, the, what this CIS team is going to be like because of the breakup in, in, their, uh, in the state. But, you know, from what we've seen so far, they look quite strong. Well, Wally Schreiber trying to push it through, but nothing doing. And back come the CIS, Boris Mironov with the long slap shot, testing Trevor Kidd. I think Canada have to look to uh, certain players, like obviously Sean Burke's not playing tonight, but he's a key part of this team if they're going to do something. He can absorb a lot of pressure. And some of their older players, like you know, like uh, Wally Schreiber and, and Gordy Hines, they're seasoned veterans, and they're going to have to pull, uh, pull out all the stops to beat a team like uh, the CIS. Another long slap shot coming in from the CIS. Continuing to apply the pressure. Patrick LeBeau there. Plays for the Fredericton Canadiens. They've got a lot of American leaguers, uh, the uh, sort of like the farm team to the NHL uh, players on the squad, and they're good, experienced hockey players. I think you know, really, the uh, the Canadian team has a lot of a lot of depth. They may not be the top players, but they're certainly uh, they're certainly be hungry enough. Well, we saw in their first game. You may have seen it yesterday here on Screen Sport. They were very, very good counter punchers, the Canadians, a team that looks set to absorb punishment and then counter-attack and score on the break. Another battle on the boards. This one a very physical game already. There's Nikolsky in there in battle with Adrian Plavsic. But still the CIS looking to do something here. Good battling there from Nikolitschin. One of many Dynamo Moscow players on this CIS team. Very much a Moscow-based squad. See, this will be the problem now, Nick. The, if penalties are going to start early on Canada, then, you know, they're going to be in real trouble. They're going to have to... I hope they've got their penalty killing sorted out, because the uh, CIS power play over the years has been brilliant, and uh, they could really... This is make or break for the, for the uh, Team Canada. So Fabian Joseph sits it out for a couple of minutes for tripping. So... The CIS will get their first power play opportunity of the match. So the first test of Team Canada's ability to kill the penalty. Straight away, CIS get control of the puck, broken up there, and forced backwards. Well, it looks like Team Canada's going to force a little bit because the, uh, the CIS tend to set up, and then when they set up their power play, they're very strong. Go, go! This is good work by uh, Team Canada. They, they've, uh, you know, not many teams strip the puck off the CIS, and uh, especially when they're short-handed. And they've done it twice, getting the enthusiastic support from their bench. But here come the CIS. That was Titov who scored against Czechoslovakia. They're not letting them settle. That's the key right here. Good play, Red. Good job, Joey. Salyanin. Good job. Takes the ball behind the puck behind his net and feeds Titov. Titov, they take it out wide to the right-hand side. The long slap shot comes in. Kid gets a hold of that glove save, but there's a rebound and possibilities in front of the net. And a goal goes in. I think Viktor Karamnov, number 26 there, the last man to get a hold of it. Karpovtsev with the shot. He'll get an assist. And then the puck fell loose in front of the net. And Vitaly Karamnov, the first man to react to it. Let's take another look at it. Well, that's the problem, Nick. You can see they set up, and they've got a good pattern. I mean, they go to the net. That shot came in, and it went off the Russian skate, but uh, it was still... They've got good set patterns. They work back to the point. Here's the shot. A man drove to the net. And that was, that's always the key. When you shoot from the, uh, from the blue line in, one of your players has to drive to the goaltender to cause problems. So Trevor Kidd's goal is breached early. 
CIS scoring on the power play. Were well, they're one for one tonight. Any blame attached to Trevor Kidd for that goal? I don't think so. Uh, he went down, but he looked like he went down a few times before it. I think it's just one of those things, you know, it was a shot on net and it was a deflection and it's not much you can do about it. Uh, the only thing I would see so far is he's given up a few rebounds, but he's going to have to be sharp, there's no doubt about that. They, they relied on Burke the last game. Uh, if they're going to rely on this young fellow here, then he better be sharp. Well, he didn't give up the rebound there. We saw in that first game against Sweden, Canada gave up an early goal, but hit back almost immediately and then soaked up pressure before counter-punching and getting the winning goal late on. And uh, this game so far following that pattern in as much as Canada have given up the early goal, but the CIS haven't conceded a goal yet against the Czechs. It's going to be tough to score against the CIS, as Canada will no doubt fly, but they'll be looking for that equaliser. I think the, uh, the one of the main things for Canada also is that this is, is probably not the team that's going to head for Albertville. It would be part of it, but there's guys still fighting for their jobs. There's spots there, and there's a lot of, you know, everybody wants to play for the Olympic team, so there's, you know, they'll have to go all out here or else they may not be going. And an opportunity on the breakaway there. Hannon trying to get it across. Lindros. That's a very sharp looking line. They look at home out there. That big ice surface seems to suit them. And Lindros being a big rangy fellow, he, he looks like he likes the room. And stolen there. Good goal. Eric Lindros, the man. Once again, Canada have hit back straight away. And it's the big teenager, Eric Lindros, putting it away. You know, you look at him and you look at a, one of your favorite players, Jager, that plays for Pittsburgh, and they look very similar in, in their uh, style of play, and they're both real young hockey players. Well, let's take another look at this one. Wally Schreibner with the assist. That was a big assist, and uh, I think even you'd have fancied getting it in from there. An there. easy finish. He hit the post. Well, that would have been embarrassing if Lindros, Lindros had uh, missed that one. It was an open net. Just managed to sneak it in there. Good work, though. Excellent work, we have to say, from Wally Schreiber. He'll get the assist on that. So, one apiece. Just five minutes gone. People are talking about sports. And people are talking about prism. People are talking about the great sports debate. Baseball's greatest games. Jim Barniak Sports Scrapbook. 76ers Insider. And Power Stick Hockey Week. Programs you can only see on prism. People are talking about exclusive Big Five action and more Flyers and Sixers games than any channel on TV. People are talking about Prism. Find out what all the talk is about. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Pro Indoor, February 17th through the 23rd. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a die hard, you don't have a prayer. Sears die hard. More power when you need it most. Who's going to back it better than Sears? Well, Schreiber into that second line for Dave Hannon. We're surprised. But well, you can see why he came in. Well, yeah, you know, the, it's still a it's still a trial period for some of these guys. Uh, as much as they all were over here, it doesn't mean they're going to the uh, going to the Olympics. You know, as part of the team. And now Canada keeping the pressure on, and it's Schreiber again, back feeding, feeding his colleague. Chabot. There's an awful lot of room out there, Nick. You know, it's, it's just like the NHL, not like the NHL games at all. It's so they have more room to make to move around. Not quite as much hitting. Now it's the CIS's turn to put on a bit of pressure. Bumbled out of it. Good defensive work there from the Canadians. And again, Canada managed to get the puck away, dumping it in. Dump and chase, very much the NHL style. Todd Brost getting in there against the boards. Smirnoff battling for the puck. And another collision there, but just getting out of it, Boris Smirnoff saw Todd Brost coming. Even though his rink is big, the Canadians are still uh, being told to follow their checks through. It's still important to uh, let, you know, the CIS players have to know that they've got to handle the puck quicker or else they're going to get bumped. 
good penetrating move here from Shardotsky. And the pressure stays on. This is Nikolshin. He's been involved in a lot of the early play. The Dynamo Moscow forward. Kevin Dahl has locked up his man on the boards behind the net and Canada relieve the pressure and bring it away well I think Canada's doing a good job right now they seem to be skating with the uh, CIS team which is something that's uh, a very hard thing to do the CIS players are, are great skaters they play together quite a bit and uh, this team Canada isn't always uh, a team for any length of time confirmation of the score one apiece then between the CIS and Canada and we saw Adrian Plavsic going back to the bench for the Canadians plays for Vancouver well he's a member of the Vancouver team and it's the first line back out again Contos Juno and Mandeville for the Canadians I think this Canadian team looks right at home I'm really surprised I didn't think they adapt as well as they have to uh this type of ice, ice surface and, and the team they're playing. I thought they'd be under pressure an awful lot more, but they're doing a real good job. Getting that early equalizer must have really helped them. I think so, and I don't think, they probably uh, gave the, the CIS a little too much respect at first. They realize now they can play with them. You know, they're out there and they're, they're playing man for man. They're hitting them, they're skating with them. That's got to give them some confidence. Chris Contos was looking to land the big hit there, but Salyanin saw him coming a long way off and just neatly skipped out of the way. Europeans very good at getting out of the way of the big hits on the boards as we've seen over the years. They've got that built-in radar. They, they know exactly when to uh, throw snow. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadians uh, are noted in the hockey world for being a bit aggressive and it, they have to maintain that reputation or, or they could be in trouble. They have to keep hitting the, the uh, CIS players. And the Titoff that was feeding it through. Trevor Kidd covers up. It's got to be a big day for this uh, young goaltender coming out of junior hockey and all of a sudden he's up against the, uh, one of the top teams in the world. Just he's made some good saves. Just 19 years old, battling for his place on the Canadian Olympic team for Alberville, which is by no means assured. I suppose, too, you know, when he's got a backup, well, I shouldn't call him a backup, Sean Burke, uh, he can go out there and pretty well do what he wants and, and uh, feel confident that if there's any problems, there's a good man ready to jump in behind him. That might take a little pressure off him. Yazin and Borchevsky involved in the battle on the boards, but it's the Canadians who managed to clear their lines. But back come the CIS again, Petrenko dumping it in, dump and chase, but it's the Canadians there first. Dave Hannon. Some hitting coming in from the Russians, Borchevsky. Mustn't call them Russians, but you, you will forgive us for the occasional lapse, I'm, I, I trust. Years of uh, calling them Soviets and Russians. Well, most habits die hard. The CIS as they are now. They'll be Russians till the day I die, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you're not on the board of the United Nations. <laughs> Another attack coming through from the CIS. Yajin, that was taking it forward. Another penalty assessed. So, one apiece here in the first period between the CIS and Canada. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a minute. They ate the same lunch, got the same heartburn, but his antacid is very different. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. That's the one you want. If you are living to today's beat, you'll love the Limbo Maniacs. Per Ubu and 14 other new music artists on Music Matters, the free CD that's yours only from Details, the men's magazine for the 90s, written to today's beat. We cover the music scene from every angle and hit the world's streets to find the styles you want to wear. We interview those who are cool and those who are hot. And our features take you from a cross-country trek with Nicolas Cage to the front lines of today's most provocative events. Details captures the excitement of sports from courtside to trackside to mountainside and makes you laugh with comics you won't find in the Sunday funnies. Details for every man who wants the best the 90s have to offer. 
Subscribe now for just $1 an issue and get the electrifying Music Matters CD free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-433-5300 to order details and get your free CD today. Welcome back to the Globe Arena in Stockholm. We're still in the first period. Canada and the Commonwealth of Independent States tied up at one apiece. Nick Halling with Alex Dampier. There's no question of these two teams going through the motions. You know, there will always be a lot of heart in these games. We, we said earlier, it's, uh, I think there's no such thing as a friendly with these two teams. I think the key, Nick's got to be still the, uh, the Canadians have got to stay out of the penalty box. Like, that was a good chance. The, uh, the, the CIS had one power play chance and they scored on it, so we really have to be, uh, I think they have to be careful not to get caught up in retaliation penalties in particular. Wally Schreiber, number 16, getting a lot of playing time and looking dangerous going down the right-hand side of the rink. Hey, this guy's challenging. I think we talked at first about a uh, guy like uh, Shriver. He's, he's got to be a key player on this team. He, he's getting a lot of ice time, mainly because he's playing very, very well right now. Good play. Good try, man. Good, good play. Let's take another look at that. Pressure coming from the Canadians. Well, that was a, that was a break you don't very often see uh, against the CIS team. A guy, uh, one winger getting in alone on, on, uh, on their defense, and, and the defense backed right in and topped the goalie. Yeah, they look very composed against the checks to the CIS, but... Uh, these Canadians look like they're going to ruffle their feathers a little bit. That was smart work from Trefilov. Saw the pressure coming and just got rid of the puck. An important clean-up operation there you're from Plavsic. I think Trefilov has had a lot to do with the uh, CIS success. I mean, I, I thought he had a great game against uh, the Czechoslovakian team. He, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for him, they could have been in trouble. Well, he was the MVP for the CIS and really was the only candidate. Had an outstanding game in that shutout. Another battle. Deep in the Canadian end of the rink. Oh, they're trying to get it away and mount an attack of their own. The CIS, little mix up there in the center of the rink, and that's given Canada another opportunity. We're seeing things here now with the CIS is uh, they don't seem to know where each other are. They, they are a little bit, uh, a little bit trouble in that neutral zone between the two blue lines. That's very uncharacteristic of their team. Usually they dominate between that zone. That's where they, they're very, very strong. Chebyev getting it away and feeding Motkov. He's another one of those players who's had a good tournament so far. And again, Canada find the puck at the wrong end of the rink as far as they're concerned. And again, getting it past the blue line, getting up into center ice. Gordy Hines buying himself a bit of time. Well, they're on a delayed penalty right now, and uh, Hines is just waiting to get settled down while they get the extra player on the ice and see if they can get set, something set up here with the extra man. And we will now have the penalty. Job, Red. Nice control out there, Red. That's good possession, Red team. Well, you heard that from the Canadian coach. If you were their coach, would you be saying the same? Well, I'd be happy that they finally got a chance for a power play. Uh, at one time, I think he declined all power plays because the Russians were so strong penalty killing, they liable to score on you. But Canada looks strong here. I, I'm really, really impressed with this team. I, you know, if they can continue like this, I, I think they've got a good chance of beating them. Herman Titov, the villain, the man who scored after 33 seconds against Czechoslovakia a couple of days ago. Well, he gets a personal timeout for the next couple of minutes, and so it's Canada who go to the power play. So what happened when the CIS had a power play? They popped it in. Canada, of course, drew level straight away, but they'll be looking to see if they can take the lead on this power play. And immediately they get an opportunity, but the CIS, good battling there from Karamnov. The CIS, Nick, they, they won't sit back like a lot of teams do. They, they pressurize all the time, even though they're shorthanded. They won't let you settle. And I, I think that's probably the same, same tactics they're going to use here. Dave Hannon trying to get it, but uh, no support there. Archibald and Lindros. Following up, and Trevor Kidd at the back leaves it for Gordy Hines. This is a key key player for the Canadian team. He, he can control things. He's a good, settled hockey player. I think they rely going to rely awfully heavily on him and uh, on defense. Every team needs a big, imposing kind of force at the blue line, and Hines is filling that role for Canada in this game. You're just dying to mention your buddy Elf, aren't you? Yeah. Big, Elf. imposing player. Elfu. That's it, Elfu. <laughs> <laughs> Furry little creature. 
I tell you, Phil Samuelson was playing for the Swedish team. I don't think they'd have lost that first game, but uh, they could have done with him in that oh, one. Oh, I can't, I can't bear this now, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, you know, Russia again, or this, pardon me, the CIS again, they're just putting a lot of pressure on uh, the Canadian team. Um, they're a funny team this way. They, they can go on the offense even though they're shorthanded, and they're not afraid to try it. They are good penalty killers, the CIS. We saw that time and again against the Czechs. The Czechs thwarted and frustrated. And indeed, on one or two occasions, the CIS threatened a shorthanded goal. And uh, Canada really doing very little at all in this power play. They were actually doing a lot more, I felt, uh, five on five. And uh, they just uh, can't seem to, to uh, gain the zone. It's Kevin Dahl playing it forward. Well, this is where we're seeing the real quality of the CIS team. I'm, you kind of wonder sometimes why they don't dominate when they got five on five and, and they've got as much pressure with just four men on the ice. Kevin Dahl again. Dahl getting a lot of playing time today. He was used sparingly in the first game against the Swedes. Molly Schreiber, another one who's getting an extended run out, finds himself locked up behind Alexander Karpotsev on the boards. Opportunities there in front of the net, but once again it gets away from Canada. See the difference at the other end when the uh, Trefilov came out to handle the puck. He didn't really handle it all that well, whereas uh, a lot of North American goaltenders can go out and play like that third defenseman and clear it. They can clear the zone. Uh, they're quite effective. Nice the call against the CIS. I think some teams are just quite happy to get the, pen, the power play over and not get scored against because the CIS have an awful reputation of scoring shorthanded goals. Which is certainly something that Coach King, Dave King, and the rest of his team will be well aware of. This game finally balanced at one apiece. And there's some youngsters from the home nation, Sweden, in the crowd. Two and a half thousand to come to watch this game. But when Sweden take the ice against Czechoslovakia, I think we can anticipate quite a few more than that and the noise level will go up as well yeah they sure follow their home team they're they're uh, well they like their ice hockey they're they're a real nation for it and uh, it just shows their standings in world rankings right now they're right up there and the Sweden the, the Swedish team was certainly a little bit surprised to lose to Canada that an upset well I think at one time it just shows the change in times uh, at one time they've been happy to get a point off Canada nowadays they're uh, they're a little disappointed if they don't win the game this is a promising move here Todd Brost the last man to get a, a shot at it, but straight away on the counter-attack is Tabachev. And a big check coming in, but it's Nikolshin trying to get it back. Patrick Lebeau tying up the CIS player down there, but the CIS get in another opportunity, and that one went far away home, and Titov was looking for that one. The Predator in front of the net. And still Canada. Now they managed to clear their lines. Gordy Hines again. Calm at the back, so Yarnin though, hits it across. The important thing here, the, the uh, Canadian defense have got to go in and pin their men. Like right there, he's got to hold that man. You can't let him go away and get back in the play. And that's what happened that last scoring chance. The uh, Canadians spun off the puck and the guy got back into the play and almost scored. Karamnov clears his lines with an assist from Fabian Joseph. Kent Mandeville getting some uh, coaching from the sidelines. Karamnov getting it across, looking for one of his teammates, can't get it away this time though. And Lindros. Mandeville and fed nicely. Chris Contos. Breakaway coming up here. Joe Juno unable to pull the trigger. Canadians are going to have to get back to their following through their checks. They just got to keep doing it. They just can't get the uh, let the CIS team wheel. You know the give and goes, or what are they going to kill them? Today's contact takes on. Let's see, I've had it with this cold, cold. The room's going. <laughs> My head's going to burst. Didn't you take a cold pill? It did not last. That's because ordinary cold pills can quit working after just four hours. Try contact. You'll get continuous relief for up to 12 hours. My head is clear. My nose is not runny. I'm with it. I'm more with it than I was before. Bye-bye four-hour medication. Hello, contact. Today's contact, 12 hours stronger than Betsy's. I've had it with this cold, cold. Fort shifting, moving right in. The shot's clear. Now you can learn superstar hockey skills. 
Hockey with Roger Nielsen from Atlanta's video. Roger Nielsen has brought together Dennis Savard, Mike Gartner, Ron Francis, Greg Milne, Doug Wilson, and Ray Bork to improve your game. You'll learn the fundamentals of puck handling and control, the art of deking, passing and receiving like the pros, superstar shooting skills. There's even a detailed section on breakouts and set plays that create breakaway opportunity. Hockey with Roger Nielsen, with freeze frame and slow-mo replay, plus spectacular highlights of the stars in action, and especially priced at just $19.99. Call toll-free 1-800-453-1500, or send check on money order for $19.99 for each video, plus $4 shipping and handling to Post Office Box 2838-D, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. I think of the two, Canada will be the more satisfied team. Well, I think they've, they've caused the CIS team to scramble a little bit. They've got them off stride. They're making them uh, do things that are very under, uncharacteristic. The only there, good point I've seen job, so far in the CIS right? is their penalty killing. They look like their old traditional selves. I think against the Canadians. There's the big fella, Eric Lindros. We talked about him before. An 18-year-old with a lot of pressure on him. A guy who gets booed wherever he plays in the world, it seems. Well, he's going to be a class act. There's no doubt about it. He's uh, just 18 now, and he's still, you know, he uh, he stands out in this kind of hockey. So I don't know what he's going to do when he's 20. Well, when you consider how much filling out he's going to do, he really is going to be a very, very imposing ice hockey player indeed, and uh, a certain future NHL great once he gets himself sorted out. Drafted by the Quebec Nordiques, of course, and uh, upset a few people up there. And he said he would never, ever play for the Nordiques. Well, he's as unpopular in Quebec as uh, Elf Samuelson is in uh, Minnesota. <laughs> that really is saying something on it. The attack coming in. Petrenko getting it around. Petrushny trying to stay with him, but Petrenko still got the, got the puck. Runs his defeat, Filimonov, and Filimonov dumping it in. Trevor Kidd goes behind the net. And Kurt Giles, the Minnesota North Star, speaking of Minnesota, looking to mop it up. The Canadians are chasing shadows right now. They've got to stop chasing that puck around. They've got to take bodies all the time in, in their end zone, or, or they're going to end up finding themselves uh, getting scored against. Still one apiece, then. Almost just about even at the moment. There's a very tired-looking Dave Hannon coming off. Takes his place next to Fabian Joseph. Dave Hannon, on the books of the Toronto Maple Leafs. One of many with NHL experience on this Team Canada squad. Here we go. Here we go. There's certainly a lot of enthusiasm on the Canadian team anyway. I, I can't remember seeing a team in, in this type of tournament so pumped up because it's, I suppose, with Elberville just a short while away, they all, uh, they're all they all looking for that spot. A big rebound, but unfortunately for Canadian hopes, it's picked up by the CIS, and here they are mounting a counter-attack. Kudyasov coming through, taking it around the net is Chidarov. But he's tightened up. Now opportunities for Schreiber. Schreiber lays it back and a great shot coming in from Gordy Hines. And it was Schreiber that made that goal. That was a good goal and in particular a guy like Hines who they look for for the defensive skills. He's coming up from behind. He does a great job following up the play. We talked about Schreiber, what an important player he is and here's Hines. Fenson coming in late, good shot. Great goal. It's the type of goal that can really break a team's back. Well, Gordy Hines has done an outstanding job at the back in this game, in this first period, for the Canadians. And now he has put them ahead. John Chabot getting a credit there with an assist as well. But Wally Schreiber with the layoff. And Gordy Hines with the shot puts Canada 2-1 ahead of the CIS after they trailed after just five minutes. There's a very good fight back by the Canadians. The Schreiber shows he's, uh, he's a good journeyman, like we said before. And here he's in, been involved in both goals so far. Uh, he's got to be a key kind of player. It's good to see uh, a good offensive defenseman on, on the Canadian team. You sometimes see them a little too flat-footed, but uh, that was a great goal and a little bit more of that offense and Canada a little, a little more uh, threatening and against a team like CIS. Well, with about 90 seconds to go, it looks like Canada could 
go in with a lead at the end of this first period and they nearly got another one. Excellent work there from Trefilov. Trefilov kept CIS right in it and straight away it's Jabarjev coming back. Karamnov takes it forward and he's hit hard against the board by Plavsic. And Patrick Lebeau in there as well. And I think Lebeau might have uh, drawn a penalty here. There we see Plavsic, the Vancouver Canucks. Well, Plavsic just missed that shot at the other end, Nick. He, it was a wide open net, and all he had to do was raise an inch off the ice, and it was in, and, he, and it went right on the stick. Well, let's see if we can see what Patrick Lebeau did here. I actually thought it was Plavsic that came back. Maybe there was something else off the puck, but couldn't see anything wrong with that. Patrick Schlegel has gone in. Must have been something behind the play. But that's unfortunate. Canada could have been up 3-1 there quite easily. And I don't think, like, the, the CIS haven't really had any out-and-out -out scoring chances, really. There hasn't been many really, really cut-and-dried chances. It has some decent shots, but I think Canada have had as many uh, chances as uh, the CIS team. Definitely, I think uh, they deserve this one-goal lead that they've got at the moment. They lead it 2-1. The CIS came out. They took that early opportunity and led. But here's Kurt Giles doing some defensive work now for Canada. The CIS looking to try and draw level before the end of this first period. Gordy getting across. You've got to be careful here with this much time left. It's a real killer if you lose a goal this time of night. You know, just to 30 seconds left in the period. Kapotsev with the long slap shot. Nowhere near Nicole Shin. They work that high man a lot. They bring it back to the hash marks and shoot. It's something that the traditional Russian team never did. They hardly ever shot. They worked it around, worked it around until they got the perfect play. The Canadians get that one away. Last few seconds of this first period, then Canada clinging on to a 2-1 lead. But up against a power play, but they've got the puck where they want it for the, for the moment. Last few seconds then, it looks like Canada will hold that lead going into the first intermission. With a breakaway on here, Dave Hannon. Nowhere anywhere near him. Lindros was trying to get up there. But the CIS get that one away. And that, the end of the first period. Canada lead it 2-1 after giving up an early goal. But they fought back well. And they've taken a 2-1 lead. That second goal coming in from Gordy Hines. There we see the scoring. It was Karamnov after just four minutes, putting the CIS on top. But Eric Lindros with an assist from Schreiber. Got him level within a minute. A minute and one second to be exact. And then Gordy Hines with Schreiber again on the assist, along with Chabot making it 2-1 Canada. And as we can see there, CIS outshot them. But Canada ended up with two pucks in the back of the net. They lead 2-1 at the end of the first period. Baseball fans, don't miss the new series, Baseball. I hope he doesn't get a lot of criticism for uh, his play here or at the, uh, at the Olympics. Yes, it'll be interesting to see how he copes with being in the goldfish bowl of the Olympics. Yeah, it's certainly be a lot of pressure because the Canadians still have a lot of pride in the game and they expect uh, the Canadian team to go there and do well, even though it's, uh, it's not what you call the cream of the crop. Whistles across the CIS goal line. And the Canadians taking it around again. Excellent play by uh, the CIS uh, goaltender uh, Trevlock. I mean, he he broke down that Canadian attack with a good uh, poke check, and you know that looked like a good scoring opportunity until he got his big stick out there. It's Dan Rotushny, the man that was taking it around the net, the defense man from the University of Cornell. youngsters he's just 21 the big difference so far I think is the Canadian team hasn't done what a traditional Canadian team has done in the past is retaliate to a lot of a lot of offenses the, the European teams are big with the sticking and jabbing and, and kind of egging you on a little bit and the Canadians have taken a lot of stuff but they're giving it and uh, obviously uh, Dave King has warned him you know you go in the penalty box and there's a good chance you lose offsides the call against the Canadians so the CIS Well, again, another opportunity. Lindros, the man, just offside. There is Big Eric. A smile for a 
colleague there. That was Dave Hannan, the recipient of the Lindros smile. He hasn't had too much to smile about, of course, but uh, an interesting few weeks coming up for him. CIS win the face-off in centre ice, and they react to the ball, the puck quickest. WIF taking it around. But it's Lindros performing the clean-up operation for Team Canada. Gets over the red line, he's deep inside the blue line. The blue line, that was a good attack, trying to feed um, Dave Archibald. Archibald couldn't quite get on the end of it, but a tremendous ring-to-ring -ring run from Eric Lindros. I think uh, it just showed some good character there. I, I didn't realize he was such a fast skater. He broke down the ice, and, and the CIS players couldn't get near him. The play broke down, and uh, the Canadian defenseman got caught standing up on that Gordy Hines, and he back-checked all the way and uh, stripped the puck off the Russian player, or the CIS player. So. You know, for a young kid, he, he's learning the game real well, offensively and defensively. But his speed is clearly something of a factor that the Canadians can use, not just in this tournament, but in the Winter Olympics in Albertville as well, because he's without doubt the fastest player on the ice right now. Well, he's got a long stride, and he's a, and he's a big man. He's very much like uh, Lemieux in some respects. Obviously, he doesn't have the hands, but uh, he's certainly got the size and strength to uh, ward players off. Canada perhaps just to settle into a rhythm again like they had in the first period. CIS not allowing them that luxury this time. You know, from what we've seen so far, Nick, I, you, you couldn't really uh, pick a team that's going to win uh, win Elberville. You know, the CIS team doesn't seem to dominate when they play Czechoslovakia. They don't seem to dominate here against the Canadian team. Uh, you kind of wonder if an outside team may pop in and get the gold medal this year. Well, the Finns, of course, are always tough. I'm surprised they're not here this year. I thought they uh, they attended this tournament last season, and I thought they might have showed up this year. And here comes a breakaway, Karamnov. And a bit of a how's your father there. Karamnov lost his stick. I thought for a minute the gloves were coming off then, but uh, this is international ice hockey, not the NHL. Oh, that was a dive. You know, you don't mind. That's the kind of thing right there, to me, that typifies the way some of these European teams play. If you touch them, they dive, and the referee uh, falls for it, and he just can't be shorthanded for really no reason. I, it was a, I think it was just a poor call. Well, Wally Schreiber doesn't look too happy. He's going off for hooking. A call that was disputed by his fellow countryman, Alex Dampier. Well, it's uh, academic. The officials say Schreiber sits out two minutes. They ate the same lunch, got the same heartburn, but his antacid is very different. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. That's the one you want. Confidence. Many men lack confidence because of premature hair loss. If you're one of them, there is a solution. JHG Hair Replacement, with over 30 years of hair replacement experience, will help bring back the confidence that you desire. We specialize in the latest non-surgical strand-by-strand -strand hair replacement techniques. With the JHG process, you can swim and shower with complete confidence. And we offer quick personalized service and complete hairstyling for men. Now you can lead a normal and active life with a natural-looking full head of hair. Call 215-671-9748 for a free brochure explaining our hair replacement process. Or stop by our new location at 14,500 Bustleton Avenue in Northeast Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Steve. Call and ask for me, and I'll tell you about this great process that helped me go from this to this. At JHG, we're dedicated to helping you look and feel your best. Now there are no more excuses for not looking and feeling confident. So, power play for the CIS early in this second period. They trail by two goals to one. Canada's going to have to be careful. The CIS is setting up a, a first-time shot off to either the left side or the right side or up into the high, high slot area. And uh, if Canada let them settle, these guys are too good as shooters and they're not afraid to drive to the net. They'll, uh, they got their first goal on a power play. There's always a chance that's how they get their next one. You haven't looked dangerous other than on the power play. That's right. Can't let load. Get it away. Coming back for the CIS. Philemon off. Well, 
Well, it's good to see. If Canada have, have developed a good system for penalty killing, then uh, you know, they, they'll stand a much better chance at Elberville and in this, the rest of this tournament because they, they do draw penalties. It's just an unfortunate Canadian tradition. One I'm sure Dave King is trying to get rid of. Well, so far, the penalty killing unit working very well for Team Canada. CIS not in a position to mount an assault at all, and indeed it's Canada, short-handed, that are pressing at the moment. Dave Archibald unable to get on the end of that one. Once again, Cup offset clears his lines. Titoff is in there. Sliding in, Gordy Hines though, shadowing him wherever he goes. Selyanin pulls the trigger. Trevor Kidd makes a glove save. So that's the danger of their power play. They've changed in the last few years in how they attack, and they're using that one-time shot. Pass across, first-time shot, get everybody on the move. And, uh, they, and they get guys driving to the goaltender, try to set up the screen. It's very effective. Uh, when we saw a tournament early in the year, the Russians were scoring a lot in their power play using that tactic. Well, that's an earlier incident there. A trip on Titov that went unpunished. I think that was another uh, yellow card incident, if I may use the term. They're too good in their skates to fall down into getting touched. I mean, they're, they're, they're excellent skaters, and they just don't fall over unless they want them. Another shot coming in from Selyanin. Cut that in my head. That's two slap shots that have come in in the last few seconds from Selyanin, and there he is again, this time hooking up with Prashurov. Prashurov gets a shot in, whistles across the net, and it stays inside the blue line. So once again, CIS mounting the drive, the build-up, slow, wild effort from in front of the net there from the CIS. I think uh, Karamnov can do a lot better than that. So Kanda might have drawn a penalty here for a cross-check. Brad Schlegel. There's that situation, you know, he had to clear the goal. Yeah, he, he jacked him a little bit hard with the stick, maybe, but... He had no choice, you just can't let those guys drive to the goaltender and set up a screen. So, Schlegel goes off, which means that for two seconds, we're gonna have five on three. It's a disaster here, they got a quick draw on score, and uh, still with the two players in the box, it leaves them uh, an additional two-minute power play. But I think Canada, it, it's a real breakthrough from what I see that they've been able to kill off this penalty. I think a lot of teams possibly are are afraid to attack the Russians like the Russians attack them. Uh, possibly King's taking a page out of their book and said, well, you know, if they're going to score, we may as well make them earn it. We'll attack them and try to uh, throw them off their set pattern a bit. Once again, the long slap shot coming in from Selyanin. A scramble in front of the net there. The officials are in to sort it out quickly. Salyanin so certainly seems to be their trigger man as far as the long slap shots are concerned on the power play. And that was the idea there. They wanted to get that shot in two seconds, try to get the goal and still have the extra power play. But I see the Russians, they look like they're, they know how to antagonize the Canadian players. They get in there and challenge the goaltender and, and all the Canadian players are growing up. You can't touch the goaltender. If you touch them, somebody has to pay for it. I can see they're going to get penalties. The Russians have got a good tactic going here. They know how to get the Canadians off the ice. And now it's a five on four once again. Still on the power play, of course. Real pressure coming in from the CIS here. Selyanin feeding Karpoksev. Selyanin again. Picking up a loose bucket for Chorov. Chorov tied up on the boards. Canada still can't relieve this pressure. Notice the stick change there, Nick. One of the defensemen lost his stick, and the uh, Canadian forward gave the defenseman the stick. He's the more important player to have one. Good, smart thinking. Smelyanin again with a long shot, and here he is again. Kampotsev, he'll try one this time. Comes off the boards. Still, the pressure stays on. Back he goes, Kampotsev. What about a pass to Smelyanin? No, he switches it. Goes the other side. Karamnov over there. See, Canada's forcing them a little bit more now. I think they'll have to because they're just setting up that one-time shot and they just, you know, eventually they're going to score. They just can't uh, give them that much time to shoot. And still, the pressure is on. Petrenko with that shot. Canada looks to get it away. Sanyardin keeps him in there. Kurt Giles had a big block there. He dropped off in front of that shot and... From that range, you could easily uh, 
scored a goal. The second will continue to take away. Gaines is getting away with a little bit in front of the net now. The uh, referee's letting a little bit more go. There's a couple cross checks that kind of turned a blind eye to. And the pressure relieved at long last, and the power play over. So Canada survive. They continue to hold a 2 1 lead. Good effort. Good effort, Gaines. That goaltender came up, that, that young, uh, young goaltender kid. I thought he did a good job, and it's got to be good for his nerves going in uh, the rest of the tournament, thinking that he can go out against one of the supposedly top teams and, and withstand a, you know, a lot of pressure, two power plays in a row. Icing the call. Yes, Trevor Kidd, definitely not a liability, the youngster from Brandon Spokane, who plays his college hockey for the University of Maine. And now, the breakaway on. It's three against two if they're quick. Fabian Joseph. That's a good grab. Fabian Joseph discovering just why Andre Trepilov is rated as a very, very hot prospect indeed for CIS goaltending. It's been said, of course, that CIS don't have a goalie they can really rely on, but uh, this young man, Andre Trepilov, Dynamo Moscow, certainly seems to be fitting the bill at the moment. Why? You know, again, that game against Czechoslovakia, you keep going back to that game, he, he stopped a lot of rubber, and he was under pressure a lot, and I think without him, the uh, CIS would be in a bit of trouble. You know, in the background, Nick, you can hear uh, Terry Crisp, he's the uh, coach of uh, Calgary Flames, he's now working with Dave King, he's the real motivator, you can hear him yelling and roaring, he's the type of guy that gets on each player's case, and if you're not playing, he'll let you know. Inside the final 20 seconds of this second period, CIS looking for that equalizer. Still Team Canada hold firm, and it's Canada counter-attacking. Looking for Lindros. Lindros has got it. The slap shot comes in and whistles off the boards. And that'll do it for the end of the second period. So Canada's one-goal advantage remains intact at the end of two periods. This game between the two top teams remains in Canada's favor. Two goals to one over the CIS. We'll be back for the third period in just a couple of moments. They ate the same lunch, got the same heartburn, but his antacid is very different. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. That's the one you want. Who does Prism have for you in 92? Woody Allen, Annette Benning, Jacqueline Bissett, Chevy Chase, Robert De Niro, Danny Glover, Peter Falk, Barbara Hershey, Dennis Hopper, Angelica Houston, Steve Martin, Demi Moore, Robert Redford, Barbara Streisand, Jason Robart, Teresa Russ, Robin Williams. Each and every month, the superstars come to life on Prism. Call your cable company and get a better variety of superstars. Get Prism today. Al Morganti. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Glenn Macnow. Hey, I've got all the answers. Honest. Jason Stark. Nobody understands sports better than I do. Angelo Cataldi. Who needs these guys? I should have my own TV show. Fenway. Opinions, arguments, and a dawn. What more do you need? The great sports debate every week exclusively on PRISM, the channel with a better variety of sports. You join us for the third period in this game between Canada and the CIS, both teams won their first match of their Swedish pre-Olympic ice hockey tournament. At the moment, it's Canada looking to make it two wins on the trot. Unless the CIS can do something about that in the final 20 minutes. Nick falling with Alex Dampier. Globe Arena in Stockholm. Well, Canada probably went into the dressing room feeling quite relieved at the second period. They, they uh, withstood a few penalties and looked good in their penalty killing. The goaltender played well, so they've got to think they've got a pretty solid squad going into third, and, and they've got a, as many chances in the last two periods of sport that the Russians have, or the CIS have. So they've got to be confident, and I'm sure they're all pumped up for this one. Well, it's the oldest cliche in the book, I suppose, but one goal, a one-goal lead is never enough. Canada cannot sit back and uh, rest on their laurels and hope that they can hold the CIS off. They've got to look to score another goal or two themselves as well here in this third period. 
Well, yeah, certainly the, the CIS team, especially, you sit back and you're in trouble. I mean, you've got to attack them all the time. You have to keep on them, keep on them, keep playing the game that got you that 2-1 league. I don't think there's any team now in, in the top uh, European leagues or the international teams that you can sit back on. They've all got a fair bit of offense, and you have to uh, respect for that, especially the CIS team. So a face-off in the CIS. The ring. It looks like the Moscow based team have managed to get it away, but not for long, and there's an offside, I think, there. This Lindris line is getting a lot of ice time. And, and they look uh, like they've played together before. They're, they're looking quite sharp. They did in the first game. We see Dave Archibald there. He's linked up with Eric Lindros on the left wing. That's played quite well. Well, they're playing tough, too, which is something uh, your, your best lines don't always do. But they're showing up in the corners and showing up on the boards, and they're, they're just playing a good, strong hockey game. Lindros and Archibald. Archibald just nicks that one away. And he's over, and uh, maybe a penalty there against Dmitry Motkov. That could have quite easily been a penalty, Nick, but I mean, Dave Archibald certainly seemed to be tripped by us by as far as we saw it, but the officials saw it otherwise, so Motkov gets away with that one. Yazin on the board, number 12 there, looking to find one of his teammates, and he does. And that's a great shot. That's Yakubov, Ravel Yakubov. We talked about it earlier, the, the, the uh, Canadian defense have got to go in and pin their man to the boards and don't let him spin back into the play. And here's a poke check turned away, walked back out into the slot and shot in the Russian. The other CS player set a pick on it. You can see it here, he'll spin away. The Russian player comes across, sets the pick on the other man right there, lets him through. Have a kid, it looked like he was wrong-footed on that one a little bit. Didn't expect it to be going up there. Well, so, Yakubov with the goal after 5.42 of the third period. We're all square at two apiece. There's not much you can do about that. You know, from that range, the guy's only 20 feet out, and uh, these guys can pull the trigger. Great wrist shots. He's at the mercy. I think he probably just took his chances and went down and hopefully took away as much of the net as possible. But not enough. Ravil Yakubov levels it up. And that should set us up for an interesting 14 or 15 minutes or so. Well, the CIS have looked strong in the beginning of each period. And uh, again, you know, they scored two goals the first few minutes of the first period and the first few minutes of the third. I think if Canada can just keep knuckling down here and not try to play a defensive game and just keep attacking, which I'm sure they will. Kenny Yarum, Chuck feeds Stefan Roy, and Roy really should have had that one in. Trefilov again coming to the rescue of his team. I see Wally Schreiber going away from it, but they should have scored there, Team Canada. Great, great chance. And again, Schreiber's involved in this. You know, a guy who's, uh, again, a journeyman, and, and he's doing a real good job. The goalie played well. He challenged him and took away uh, most of the net on him. Trefilov doing a very good job indeed. Thwarting. There we are. There we can see it from above. That's John Chabot, in fact. Not Stefan Roy. John Chabot. But he plays his ice hockey in Milan. He's from Indian, Native American Indian stock. Well, he's been around. At least Canada are getting the chances and creating the chances. That's probably what King is, is more worried about than anything, that they get up against this team and wouldn't create enough offensive chances. And I think the only thing they have to work on now is a little bit of their defensive zone work. And it's Chabot bringing it out. The counter-attack on again, Dan Ratushny. Dumping it in. Nobody there for Team Canada. And so the CIS get a break here. Three on two, but support coming in and a very, very important interception there from Gordy Hines. And Schlegel with the big hit. Hines and Schlegel have played very well at the back for Team Canada. That's their first defensive front. I think they're lucky to pick up a guy like Gordy Hines. He's, uh, he's going to be invaluable in the... Uh, rest of this tournament if they're going to win it because he's got that offensive thrust and plus he's defensively he's quite strong we haven't really seen a lot of mistakes by the uh, canadian defense and sometimes that's a real suspect area in the canadian game well Gordy hines the guilty man i think a spot of hook in there i think perhaps well he got caught out a little bit a little bit flat-footed and i think he pretty well had to put the hook in and uh Otherwise, he could have been in a bit of trouble. And let's see if we can see it again. And the yeah, man was clean through, so Hines does what a man's got to do. Well, you know, if, if the Russian hadn't gone down there, he got away with it, because all he did was stick the hook through and wrenched him around, which is a good play, and a lot of the times you get away with it, but he yanked him just a little too hard, and uh, he spun him onto his knees. 
these Europeans, they're always falling over, aren't they, Alex? Well, I don't know what's wrong with them. They've they got to get the skate guards off one of these days. It's funny when they, a lot of these players go and play in the NHL, uh, they learn not to dive around as much anymore because they lose the respect of the rest of their teammates. Kurt Giles looks to clear it, but the pressure stays on. Giles again. I think Canada's got to force them. I, I, I would think if they sit back, they're going to be in trouble. They just can't, can't allow them just to, to tee off on this uh, goaltender. Well, a very important power play, this. Two apiece. Team Canada looking for their opening. Or to the CIS, rather, looking for their opening. They're patient. They're Smirnoff. They are challenging a bit more, Nick. But still, that guy, he, he's getting a lot of shots. I mean, every power play is getting two or three shots, and he can shoot. They're going to have to do something to... Uh, take away that shot back in center ice but immediately it comes back and trying to thread his way through the needle there was Titoff they've done a good job on keeping Titoff relatively quiet he is dangerous and there he is number 13 Herman Titoff was well, number four on the point uh, Selginen uh, I probably pronounce that more like a Finn but he's the guy that's getting all the all the big shots and they, they work to him all the time they've got to start cheating out there a bit this man off Looking in fact, in fact, they are. That man just out there is cheating towards number four. He's trying to take away that shot. He's got to be on him quick. There it is, the shot coming in from Salyanin. To give him his proper pronunciation. Well, that's my Finlander coming out in this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak Russian that well. well. However you pronounce it, he is dangerous with the slap shot. And here they are, setting him up again, Salyanin. That one doesn't get through. There's a scramble in front of the net, and it's Kurt Giles cleaning up. And so the pressure goes off, but straight away, it's coming back again. Trefilov, the goalie, out of his net. And the pressure stays on. Here's Salyanin with another opportunity, but again, a patient build-up. Salyanin lets that one go. Another shot coming in, well saved by Trevor Kidd. But again, intense pressure, possibilities for Yazin. Yazin couldn't quite... Get what he wanted there from the puck. It just got away from him, and the break is on from Dave Archibald. And that shot from Brad Schlegel. That was a good, that was a good save. Uh, that was a good play because the, the Russian de or the CIS uh, defenseman dropped, set up a screen, and he just snapped it over top of him. Made it look very easy indeed. Andre Trefilov, Brad Schlegel frustrated. And when you see Trefloff making saves like that, it's hard to believe that he's actually been uh, his net's been broached twice in this game. Well, he's had uh, he's had a lot of pressure at times, and the goals that have gone in have been good goals. There hasn't been anything sloppy, and he's made some good saves. But I, I think the uh, CIS are underestimating this kid if they if they say he's not a very good goaltender because he's certainly uh, stood up to a lot of good quality shots in the last few games. So here's Gordy Hines for Team Canada, looking to begin another assault. Schlegel and Schlegel looking up for Dave Archibald. Oh, great hit. Good hit. Lindros just followed that one right through. And it's Lindros now in center ice. In and back and feeding Schlegel and here's Lindros again. Deep in his own territory. Ratushny. Um, you're not going to go one-on-one -on -one with Eric Lindros and uh, get away with much as Boris Muranov discovered there. There goes the big fella. 2-2 then between Canada and the CIS. We'll be back after the break. Larry Bird was born to be a champion. He was destined for glory in the game he loved. Unbelievable! Call this toll-free number now and get bird watching at its best in this amazing video, Larry Bird, a basketball legend. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the best way to capture all the drama of sports. Through rare footage, you'll follow Larry from the basketball courts of Indiana to the hallowed halls of the Boston Garden. Be there when the championships are won. Share the glory, live the moments. Be there for the hard-fought and emotional duels with Larry's longtime friend and rival, Magic Johnson. 
Call now to subscribe or new. Get your free video and 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Don't miss this heartwarming tale of a boy who lived his dreams. It's the story of a legend. The legend lives in Sports Illustrated. Call now. Away, Ken Yaremchuk dumping it in. It's third period, we're still balanced at two apiece. Good work, Reg. You're going well, Reg. Keep it going now. The way things are going right now, I think if Canada keep out of the penalty box, there is a penalty hitting from behind. That could be a five-minute penalty quite easily. Sergei Selyanin shrugs his shoulders. You know, that's one of the worst hits in hockey, coming up from behind a guy, three feet from the boards, and drilling him into the barrier. That's one of the things that's getting outlawed in, in uh, NHL hockey now, because it's, it's, it's one that caused a real serious neck injury. So Leonin will spend a couple of minutes, well, at least a couple of minutes. This could be a five-minuter. I'll have to wait and see what the officials made to that. But whatever, so Leonin will take no further part for the next two minutes, his second penalty of the game, boarding the call. So, Team Canada go to the power play. And this really a crucial phase of the match inside the final 10 minutes, two apiece. Canada must look to try and make something on this power play. Well, the story so far has really been penalty killing. Both teams have done a tremendous job in penalty killing. Uh, except, of course, the CIS scored early on in, in the uh, first period on the power play. I think right now, whenever Canada get a chance to shoot, they've got to, like, they've got to tee it off. They can't be messing around. Well, that was Gordy Hines with the shot there. And Joe Juneau didn't like something. Not quite sure what you know is complaining about. Well, I think that shot from behind that caused the uh, penalty initially is something that none of the players like, and then uh, you know they just can't take that. And they're, they're going to show the Russian or the CIS team that they're they're going to stand up and uh, start pushing and shoving back a bit. Good save coming in from Trefilov from the shot from Gordy Hines. The Canadians have got to get somebody to the net. The goaltender's playing well. That puck comes back to Hines. They've got to drive to the net, get some screen in front of them. Just over eight minutes remaining. Archibald. Hooking up with Joe Juneau. The man who just lost his temper a couple of minutes ago as he got his composure back. Juneau looking for a man, finds Archibald, and Archibald's fairly weak slap shot goes into the glove of Trefilov. No problems there. They're working the, the very similar power play to the Russians, but the Russians have it down a little bit better. They, they work it around and they work it over to that uh, first timer. And the Canadians will have to do that. They'll just have to be a little bit more patient. Lindros, Archibald, Gordy Hines. It's interesting he's it's interesting it's stuck Archibald on the point on this uh, power play. I'd hate to see him in trouble with a one-on-one -on -one with the, some of these CIS players. He could find himself in a little bit of trouble. Maybe Dave King gambling here and hoping that... Uh, Opportunity there for Joe Juno, but once again it's Treffel off to the rescue. But Juno in front of the net, thwarted by Treffel off, who is really coming to his team's rescue once again. That was a good setup. They uh, they got a guy loose down at the bottom post, and uh, goaltender stood his ground. Juno took a lot of time as well. Though. Do you think Joe Juno will be a little disappointed with his finish there? Well, maybe, but there was a CIS defenseman coming across from his left, and he had nowhere to go. Uh, all he could do is hope that the goaltender went down and he could put it up upstairs, which he tried, but uh, didn't get away with it. It was a good try. But he got rule, the point man. Place of Brad Schlegel. And Archibald's got to go back and do a little bit of defending. Trevor Kidd. Takes it around behind his own net. Archibald pick it up from there, and immediately you could see coming in there could Yasov. But Team Canada bring it away, and they're over the blue line. Opportunity here for Lindros. The pressure stays on. Archibald. They're working the puck around well, but they still, they still have to get those shots on net. They're making some passes, in it, but they're not really penetrating. Stick interception there, but it's come back in. Archibald again. CIS really forced the play. They pinch hard over on the boards and uh, try to isolate one man. Oh, 
Well, you can see it's going to be a tight third period here. Yeah, a mistake now will cost one or other of these teams the game, so the pressure really on. And we have ourselves an injured player getting up very slowly, Herman Tito. Tito looks like he may have taken a, a whack in the face. And here we have a nosebleed there for Titoff. And here we cut an elbow. He has had pressure all day. There's been somebody on Herman Titoff's case the whole time on that occasion. Oh, he cut a stick. It was Patrick Lebeau doing the damage. I'm sure that was unintentional. And so Herman Titoff will sit this one out. We'll have to wait and see how bad that is. That could be a break. Let's hope it's nothing more serious than just a nosebleed. You know, in the, the way they're calling it now, any high stick at all, if it, it draws blood, accidental or not, it's a five-minute penalty. So Canada got off very lucky there. They didn't uh, get a major penalty out of it. Well, it's been a feature of the game that the officials have let quite a few things go. I think some of them must be worried, though, that when they go to the uh, go to Elberville, that might not be the case. I'm sure it'll be a lot tougher in Elberville. CIS on the attack themselves. But Lindros is back there. And a very cool, calm and collected play from Team Canada. Chabot dumping it in. Nobody home, though, for the Canadians. This is where fitness is going to come in. We're going to see now what kind of shape Team Canada is in. I'm sure the Russian or the CIS team is in top physical condition. And if Canada slack off at all, they're going to find themselves in trouble. So if the, if the fitness is up, I think Canada have got more than a, a better chance of winning this game. Well, the pressure certainly coming. Trevor Kidd. Big save. Now to make a big save there. That could have been disastrous. Trevor Kidd equal to the task because Alexei Yazin was moving in on that one. Well, here he is here. You know, he hasn't had a lot of work to do, and that's, that's even harder on a goaltender. There's a screen in front. Oh, he came across with a big save. They got, you know, that, that should have been buried. I thought the CS should have been one up on that one. But that was good reflexes on, on Kidd's part. He's a good goaltender. Well, he certainly hasn't let his team down, Trevor Kidd. Sean Burke. New Jersey Devils. First choice for this Team Canada team. May have to look over his shoulder for the future. Well, this, this young lad looks like he's got a future. It's got to be difficult. It's the hardest kind of game to sit back and you don't get a lot of work and all of a sudden you get a power play and you get four or five shots. And then you sit back for the five minutes and no game. Here we go. Here we go. A nice call against Team Canada. So the face-off will be in their territory. Pro Indoor, February 17th through the 23rd. I used to beat the competition with a convincing fake and a pretty good slam dunk. But in the business world, those moves don't work. What does work are super box seats at Spectrum 2, the new arena. There's indoor parking, a VIP entrance, big comfortable seats, and a sensational view of all the sixes and flyers action. In business, I know what it takes to be successful. And when Spectrum 2 opens, you better believe the doctor will be in. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a diehard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Who's going to back it better than Sears? The reflex save there, Trevor Kidd, that, one, that shot came out of nothing. It shows how important Kidd's concentration needs to be. be another icing call. CIS turning the screws here in the latter stage of this third session. It looks like it. I think uh, Canada may be just sitting back a little bit, trying to weather the storm, and that's uh, certainly not the way to go about it. They might be tired, too. It's hard to say. They, they, they didn't go with a particularly long bench. You know, some of the key players had a lot of ice time tonight, and uh, that might be telling right now. Well, we saw this 
in the uh, Canadians game against Sweden that uh, Canada seemed to be happy to sit back and absorb pressure almost as if it was part of the policy to see how they would play when they were under the cosh and they rose to that challenge magnificently Lindros looking to set up a breakaway here but it's a dangerous strategy that sitting back against the CIS I wouldn't think it's something that uh, Dave King would, would ask them to do I mean if you're a far uh, inferior team then you have to sit back and weather the storm but, but there's no reason why Canada should sit back against any team uh, possibly the game against Sweden, they just they couldn't uh, sort their lines out. And possibly King said, well, look, if you're in trouble, let's just make sure we're, we're strong in our defensive zone. But certainly, if you've got to fancy one or other of these teams to break the deadlock, then a betting man's money would probably be on the team in white, the Commonwealth of Independent States. They're certainly looking stronger in the uh, dying stages of this third period. Be moving, be moving. You can see a guy like Lindros has had a lot of ice time, and uh, he may just be feeling the pace just a little bit right now. Still, the pressure stays on. The board, the board. You can hear them yelling, "Use the boards! Use the boards!" They don't want to. They don't want to create any chances at all for the CIS, but coming up the middle, keep everything tight to the wall and down deep. Icing against the CIS. That's probably why they've done so well tonight, too, Nick, is that is Canada has kept the game wide and kept it deep as much as possible. They haven't tried to do an awful lot up through the middle and give the CIS a chance to pick off a bad pass and all of a sudden go on the offense. So, Dan Ratoshny, we saw coming out there, which may, may be that we'll see the defensive partnership of Gordy Hines and Brad Schlegel back on the ice for Team Canada. Hines, for me, has been the pick of the Canadian players tonight. Well, I think he's done a good job defensively. And, uh, you know, when, when, when it's a 2-2 game, as it is right now, and he's, he's got one of the goals and he had another good scoring chance, then, you know, you've got to look at him as being probably one of the top players. Him and Shriver, I think, have, have done very well. Yeah, both Shriver certainly players. caught the eye. Assists on both goals. 2-2, though. The work rate, what, what impresses me with a lot of the Canadian players, they, nobody's going through the motions. They're all out there and they're all contributing. Uh, there's no passengers. Everybody's working real hard. Well, the CIS pressing forward once again. It's, everyone's locked up on the boards. And again, nobody quite know, quite knowing where the puck was on that occasion. We're back on the boards. Canada will hope to keep it there, but it's come out again. Petrenko tries to get it across. Still the pressure on. Team Canada fighting for that one and getting it away. They were in nice. trouble there. They were in trouble. They'll take that icing call. Obviously, Trefilov on the uh, CIS side has caught the eye once again, but uh, Herman Titov, who we saw go off with that nosebleed, he was hustled and harried, and he has got a goal, but he's always been the thorn in the Canadian flesh, hasn't he? Well, he yeah, he works hard, and that's how he got his uh, bang in the face, is, is grinding it out down the boards. He's, he's a good, solid player. And, you know, they're going to miss him while he was while he was off. But they've got so many good players. Save there from Motkoff, snap shot, slap shot. He has come up with some big saves here in the last five minutes. He's, uh, he's looking more like a veteran every time he uh, has to come up with a big save. It's Wally Schreiber. Oh! Right across the goal from Gordy Hines. That would have capped his game off nicely. But it wasn't to be, and you could hear the, the gasps from the, the Canadian bench. But the pressure stays on. Team Canada looking for the winning goal here. Andre Trefilov just takes the sting out of the situation. Gloves up. Just scoots the puck around once or twice before letting the official have it. And time starting to be a little bit of a factor here now in this third session. Two apiece between Canada and the CIS. But Trefilov's got to feel the pressure also. He's, uh, he's in a situation where he's had very little to do and all of a sudden down comes Shriver, bang, big shot. And then down comes uh, Gordy Hines, another big shot. It's a funny game for goaltenders. They're not in it, and all of a sudden they have to come up with a big save. And certainly a goal now for either team would more or less put the other team out of contention. Less than two minutes to go. This face-off very important for the CIS. Canada looking for a late winner. And Lindros has got it. Lindros reacts first to that one, tries to take it around the net. He's tied up well by the CIS. But it's still there, and Lindros has got it again. Lindros goes down. 
There's a scramble. The CIS did very well defensively covering up on the boards there, but it's gone back in again. Dave Archibald looking to feed, find Lindros. Lindros has got it and taken it around. But Archibald has come inside. And the CIS get it away, but not for long. A lot of clutching and grabbing going on out there. The CIS know they can't mess around with this Lindros line. They're grabbing every chance they get, trying to draw them down. Good hit. Dave Hannon getting in on the boards there, but Hannon may pay for that. And it's the CIS that bring it away. Nicole Shin pressing forward inside the final minute now. Still two apiece. Men down all over the ice. Can't guilty again, Nick. The Russians outnumbering him down in the corner. They had three men down, can't only had two. You've got to go man to man. This time of night, you've got to take your man out, pin him, don't let anybody back in the play. Almost scored a goal very similar to how they got their first one, walking out from the corner on completely unmarked. Today's contact takes on... Carol's horrible cold. I have a lot of congestion in through here. I'm like it's going to blow off the top of my head. You took a cold pill, right? The effects wore off. The congestion's coming back. That's because ordinary cold pills can quit working after just four hours. Try contact. You'll get continuous relief for up to 12 hours. I felt wonderful. All my symptoms were gone. Everything dried up. It's for busy people who have no time to be sick. This is a great product, and I'm going to go out and buy it tonight. Today's contact, 12 hours stronger than Carol's horrible cold. Hi, I'm Sandy, and I just got to tell you about this great music offer I just received. It's called Greatest Original Oldies, and it's just packed with fabulous songs from the 50s and 60s. See you later, alligator. Here's the music offer you've been looking for. Greatest Original Oldies. A special collector's edition of 36 number one oldies hits by the original artists. You'll get... I'm so crazy about this music. And this special offer has all the songs you remember. Only through this special TV offer can you get greatest original oldies for the incredible low price of $19.98 for the giant cassette set or $24.98 for the compact disc. So if you love 50s and 60s music like I do, you just got to get greatest original Aldi's. What are you waiting for? Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-452-4300 or send $19.98 for the cassettes or $24.98 for the compact discs to greatest original Aldi's P.O. Box 210, Little Ferry, New Jersey. Please include $4 for postage and handling. Just on a minute remaining. Still 2-2, two, two. Trevor Kidd helping to keep his team in the game. Andre Trefilov performing similar honours for the CIS. Two apiece, but uh, really both goalies have been stars tonight in their own different ways. Yeah, and they're both young goaltenders. And, you know, from what we've heard from uh, the CIS camp, they don't expect a great deal from Trefilov. And, we, of course, we didn't really know what to expect from uh, Kidd. And both of them have come up with uh, you know, veteran performances. Last few seconds then. Can somebody break this deadlock? Joe Juno's doing his best. Gets it in. Pressure coming in on that one. One nearly went in for Team Canada. Centimeters away there from Joe Juno. Really pressing forward from back deep. But now it's the CIS on the attack. Going around the boards. Kid stops it. See the CIS now, even late in the game. Their game plan. Get it in. Get it in. Don't mess around that neutral zone. Put it in behind. That's exactly what they're doing very much a North American tactic. This one looks like it may be destined for a draw unless Team Canada can come up with something in the last gasp. You can hear the countdown from the kids. Just a couple of seconds to go. That should do it. And there it is. Two apiece. It finishes. The two teams stay unbeaten. They'll pick up three points from their two games. There's the look at the scoring. Just a one goal in that final session from Ravil Yakubov. Very quickly from you, Alex. A fair result as we see the shots on goal tally. Well, I think Canada's very happy to come out with a draw. The first two periods, they could have had uh, more goals from what happened, but they should be happy with a draw, I think. So, three points each for CIS and Canada. CIS on top at the moment with a superior goal difference. We'll see it tomorrow for Sweden v Czechoslovakia. Bye-bye for now.
sports coverage of the 1992 Swedish pre-Olympic ice hockey tournament continues with game four in the series between Sweden, the host nation, and Czechoslovakia. Nick Halling along with Great Britain coach Alex Dampier welcoming you to the Globe Arena in Stockholm. And if we take a look at the table, we can see it's an important game this for both teams. Sweden defeated by Canada in their first game. The Czechs beaten by the CIS. Sweden, the host nation, really were surprised by Canada, who withstood a lot of pressure and came back to win 2-1. They've got to get it right in front of their home fans tonight. Well, I think it's really important. They've, they've got an older team. They've got a lot of ex-NHL players. And, uh, you know, the last game they played Canada, they really outshot them by a tremendous margin, but just couldn't create goaltending. And, uh, you know, they, they've got to do something. Their home, uh, home crowd is just not going to keep showing up if they don't put uh, a performance together. Because I suppose with um, the Canadians and the CIS drawing yesterday, that still leaves the group wide open. The winner of this one could still go on and leapfrog the other two with a bit of luck when the result's going the right way and could still win the tournament. Well, they're, they're, the margins of, uh, you know, the winning margins aren't very big, so anything can happen. I think that you're looking at one or two goal spreads, and uh, which is really nothing. Sweden have got good, good hockey players, and uh, I can't understand why they're not doing better than what they are. I suppose it's just the breaks, but, you know, they've got to start making their own breaks here soon. Well, it's the Swedes, of course, in their usual blue and yellow. The Czechs are in red. Both teams looking for their first win of this 1992 pre-Olympic tournament. And an early opportunity here coming in from Hakan I mean, there's a shot that a, a good a good scoring chance from a quality area, and, it, and they miss it. It's not not like Lube, you know, he's, a, he's a, a good hockey player, and his big thing is scoring goals. Another shot comes in and just smacks against the back of the boards. And the Czechs take it over the blue line into center ice. It's going to be interesting to see Borean Salming playing again. He put so many years in with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the NHL. I haven't seen him play for a number of years now, and uh, I always admired him. He's a tremendously skilled hockey player. And as we said in game one, you don't get to 40 years of age and still be playing at this level without having an awful lot of natural talent. And he realizes that old. He's as old as you, Nick. He's even older. Not quite as old as you, though, Alex. <laughs> the Czechs looking for an early goal. A feature of all three of the previous games is a goal within the first four or five minutes. But this one will follow suit. Anyway, here come the Swedes once again. I think they've got to look at uh, their big players like Hack and Lube. You know, he's, he's got to be a good scorer. Um, Naslin, another guy that's a proven goal scorer. They're older players, but they've always managed to get on the score sheet. And I think Czechs, or the, uh, Czechs will have to keep an eye on them. Or these, these guys could, could do the job in front of their home crowd. Well, taking it out is Leo Gudas. And the Czechs losing it again in center ice. The Swedes making the better start. Patrick Kjellberg laying it back. Cut to Peter Kahn back. Kjellberg still fighting for the puck up there. Pressed up against the board. And the Czechs looking to clear their lines. Peter Rosal, what a stinker of a game he had in game one against the, uh, the CIS. He'll be looking to make amends. Of course, both teams Nick, uh, get drained by the NHL. They lose a, lo a lot of good players uh, to North America, and I, I'm sure they must feel a pinch a little bit because if they don't have a tremendous population player-wise, every good player they lose is, uh, is a real big loss. I think the Russians have more depth, or the CIS have more depth. They can afford to lose a few players here and there. And the Swedes mop it up, Charles Berglund. I think in some ways I'm... I'm quite surprised to see some of these older names on the Swedish team. I would have thought they would have got some youngsters in by now, but it shows they possibly don't have the depth at this uh, at this level. Offside there. That'll be assessed against Team Sweden. There's the culprit. They ate the same lunch, got the same heartburn, but his antacid is very different. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. That's the one you want. Hi, I'm Sandy, and I just got to tell you about this great music offer I just received. It's called Greatest Original Oldies, and it's just packed with fabulous songs from the 50s and 60s. See you later, alligator. Here's the music offer you've been waiting for.
for Greatest Original Oldies. A special collector's edition of 36 number one oldies hits by the original artists. You'll get... I'm so crazy about this music. And this special offer has all the songs you remember. Only through this special TV offer can you get greatest original oldies for the incredible low price of $19.98 for the giant cassette set or $24.98 for the compact discs. So if you love 50s and 60s music like I do, you just gotta get greatest original oldies. What are you waiting for? Check out an order. Call toll-free 1-800-452-4300 or send 1998 for the cassettes or 2498 for the compact discs to Greatest Original Oldies, P.O. Box 210, Little Ferry, New Jersey. Please include $4 for postage and handling. Michael Johansson. One of the younger players plays for Your Gardens. Just straight offside there as Salming went through. Certainly the better start made by the Swedes. The Czech started badly against uh, CIS as well, giving up that goal inside. 33 seconds. I think both, both teams, Nick, you know, the Czechs had a, had a dismal night against the CIS in so much they couldn't score, although they had the, the flow of the play. And the, the Swedes are in the same situation with Canada, and here's the CIS in Canada on top of the table. So I don't think it's over until the last games are played by the looks of things. It's going to be tight. Certainly doesn't seem to be a lot between the four nations. And of course, as we've said before, it is a pre-Olympic tournament, so nobody wants to give too much away. Although obviously competition is pretty fierce with a lot of these guys playing for their places. There's a bit more hitting too. I'm surprised to see Sweden bumping uh, the Czech team as much as they are. Again, I think penalties and, and power plays are going to be a key factor. Well, Lubina and Anderson are locked up against the boards. Anderson trying to get it out. And I think the official may have to step in here, and he does so. Peter Anderson coming away. Had a good game against Team Canada. Of course, the Swedes have lost a lot of good players. You know, we keep harping on the fact you know, the coach right here, he's, he's got to be feeling the pressure of the uh, Swedish public without any doubt at all. The, uh, the Swedes have lost some tremendous players, you know, like your buddy Elf. You know, you just, he's, you just can't replace a guy like that in tournaments like this. He, he'd be the backbone of this club right now. And, of course, the Ulf Samuelsons of this world are busy in the NHL. Ulf playing for Pittsburgh, the defending Stanley Cup champions. Defensive laps there, the guilty man that time, Peter Anderson. A little bit sloppy, the Swedes. They've got away with it so far, but uh, they're going to have to watch it. Lars Edstrom goes round. Battling on the eye, battling in the corner there. Patrick Eriksson tries to take it around. Got an assist there from Kjellberg. Still looking for the first goal, but the Swedes pressing. And the official saw something he didn't like there. Let's see who the guilty man is. Could be Zemlicka. The check, number 13, and there it is. Richard Zemlicka goes off. Well, this is Sweden's big chance here right now. They could really, uh, they could use an early goal. You know, if, if they can get something going right away. I, I think they're probably feeling the pressure of, uh, of the home crowd, too. It's difficult being a home team and possibly not the favorite team. So, Sweden get a power play with around four and a half minutes gone. And here's Anders Elderbrink. Interesting to see how they set up. A lot of the teams now are using what the CIS uses uh, out to the point of first timer. Elderbrink with the shot, there's a rebound, and that's gone in. Mats Naslund got hold of the rebound. The shot came in from the defense man, the point man, Anders Elderbrink. And Mats Naslund was on there to bang in the re rebound. And you wouldn't expect a guy like Mats Naslund to miss an opportunity like that. That one came gift wrapped. Well, they're power play. We're just talking about how the Russians set up. And this came back to the point. He had time to shoot, and he did. But Naslin was smart. He went to the net. Lindquist was down below, taking out his man. Naslin popped it in. But that's the thing. They had somebody going to the net all the time. There was a screen set up. There he is. Bang, it's gone. 
nothing the goalie could really do. He made the save. I think the defense were to blame on that one. So Sweden get the good start they need once again. The fourth game has gone like all the others, an early goal. But as we've seen before, the team that scores first doesn't always win. But Sweden take a 1-0 lead against the Czechs. Mats Naslund with the goal. Getting in the rebound from Anders Elderbrink, Hakan Lube also credited with an assist. Sweden leading the Czechs, 1-0, less than five minutes gone. We'll be back. People are talking about sports, and people are talking about prison. People are talking about the great sports debate, baseball's greatest games, Jim Barniak's sports scrapbook, 76ers Insider, and Power Stick Hockey Week. Programs you can only see on prism. People are talking about exclusive Big Five action and more Flyers and Sixers games than any channel on TV. People are talking about Prism. Find out what all the talk is about. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Pro Indoor, February 17th through the 23rd. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a diehard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Who's going to back it better than Sears? So Sweden continuing to protect this one goal lead in the first period. Well, one goal is not going to save them in this tournament, I don't think, Nick. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough. I still think Czechoslovakia, the way they played against the uh, CIS, have the potential to win games. And I, I also, you know, the way Sweden played against Canada, they've got the potential. But, you know, putting that puck behind the goaltender is another matter. Well, a lot depends on this um, first line for the Czechs, I suppose. The first two lines, really, that couldn't uh, get past the CIS. It's Jelinek, Herbeck, and Zemlik as the front line, number one line for the CSFR. And the second line, Rosal, Lang, and Kastak. None of them have exactly distinguished themselves so far in this pre-Olympic tournament. Well, neither goaltenders really stood out either. I mean, goaltending hasn't been a, a strong point for both these clubs. And yet Sweden last year had some, uh, some very good goaltending. So Sweden leading 1-0, continuing to apply the pressure. Opportunity there. The puck got away, and now the Czechs on the counter-attack over the blue line. Good shot and a good save. I'm not sure where he, if he knew it was. Hakan, uh, rather, that was uh, Kamil Kastak there. Testing Soderstrom. That was the first real break we've seen uh, offensively up through the middle. Everything's been going up the boards, and all of a sudden, the Czechs saw an opening through the middle, and they were gone. I think uh, Sweden really better be prepared for that. That's... Uh, you know, they can't afford to let too many breakaways go or they'll soon find themselves losing. Well, Roger Nordstrom was a little bit fortunate here. This shot from Kastak coming in and Nordstrom didn't really know where it was. But he deserved his luck, perhaps. Well, he came out and challenged him. He knew he had a, a defenseman coming over, back-checking, and uh, he just took it, went out and took the angle away. So really, the options were cut down. 25-year-old plays for Malmo. Here the Swedes are struggling in their own end. You know, I think this is the problem. If they don't start hitting and pinning their men, they're going to find themselves getting caged in by the uh, Czechoslovakians. That's Gustafsson back deep. Bringing it away. Salming the old man. And Gustafsson's got to be... I bet he's close to 35. You know, he's not a, a real young fella. He does lube. And for a veteran team, loaded with experience. I think they'll all feel the pressure if they don't uh, get some results in this tournament. They could be looking for changes to go to Elbertville. Handling the puck, but also a skill about how to play in the corners. And An they... opportunity here. That's Fahela's shot. Just goes high and wide. Now it's Fahela. He's going to have to go back and retrieve. Back on the checks once again. I'm running out in this first period. 
Cash that getting it across. That was Sahela again coming through. And failure to control the puck. Let's the checks down. Either uh, the Czechs and, and the CIS don't seem to be the dominant force of what they were a few years ago. Neither team uh, really looked like they can just uh, outgun either one of these teams. And Sweden, Sweden are holding their own quite easily with them. It's an easy excuse, I suppose, but we, you have to question whether the political upheaval in Eastern Europe has had a, an, an impact because, let's face it, sport is not exactly the number one priority of the Czechs. Thought they'd scored there. They got one in the net right on the whistle but it doesn't count there you see the Czechs out outshot the Swedes in terms of shots on goal in that first period and unfortunately for them the puck just went into the net just after the whistle so the only score of that first period came from Mats Naslund on 441 Sweden take a one nothing lead into the first intermission but the Czechs are a little unfortunate there right at the end of that first session. So it's Sweden leading 1-0 at the end of the first period. We'll be back in the Globe Arena in Stockholm in just a minute. Today's contact takes on... Carol's horrible cold. I have a lot of congestion in through here. I'm like it's going to blow off the top of my head. You took a cold pill, right? The effects wore off. The congestion's coming back. That's because ordinary cold pills can quit working after just four hours. Try contact. You'll get continuous relief for up to 12 hours. I felt wonderful. All my symptoms were gone. Everything dried up. It's for busy people who have no time to be sick. This is a great product, and I'm going to go out and buy it tonight. Today's contact, 12 hours stronger than Carol's horrible cold. If you are living to today's beat, you'll love the Limbo Maniacs, Per Ubu, and 14 other new music artists on Music Matters, the free CD that's yours only from Details, the men's magazine for the 90s, written to today's beat. We cover the music scene from every angle and hit the world's streets to find the styles you want to wear. We enter those who are cool and those who are hot. And our features take you from a cross-country trek with Nicolas Cage to the front lines of today's most provocative events. Details captures the excitement of sports from courtside to trackside to mountainside and makes you laugh with comics you won't find in the Sunday funnies. Details for every man who wants the best the 90s have to offer. Subscribe now for just $1 an issue and get the electrifying Music Matters CD free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-433-5300 to order details and get your free CD today. And you join us at the start of the second period here at the Globe Arena in Stockholm. Game four of the Swedish Pre-Olympic Ice Hockey Tournament. The host nation lead their visitors from Czechoslovakia by that solitary Mats Naslund goal scored inside the first five minutes of the first session. Well, they're lucky they weren't uh, tied up. They just the uh, buzzer went just at the end when Czechoslovakia stuck one away. I think Czechoslovakia looked right now towards the end of the period they were having control of the game. We we'll have to see what Sweden did between periods to get them to get themselves back in. But the Czechs must be wondering what they've got to do to score. Well, it's been a problem. There's no doubt about it. But they they look like they you know they get a little more intensity down in the corners and in front of the net they may just uh, make things happen because the Swedes aren't really what you call the, the real brave guys in the, along the boards and in the corners. Now the Swedes with time to build something from the back once again. Long shot, long pass there from Rackham Lube. I would have thought also, Nick, that the, the Czechoslovakians are a younger team that uh, turn into a skating game and, and put more pressure on, on the older Swedish team. I think the Swedes are relying on a, a number of older players that have been around for quite a while. There's one of them right there, you know, 40 years old. I must admit that at 40 years old, he's probably in better shape than most 20-year-olds. He certainly seems to be as tough as he ever was. This veteran Swedish team lead by that single goal from Naslund. The Czechs yet to find the back of the net, well, during playing time, that is, anyway, in this tournament. They'll be anxious to end that particular jinx. Veselovsky involved. A long shot coming in. And the Swedes again take it past the blue line out into centre ice. Bringing it forward is Gustafsson. The pressure stays on. Kjellberg trying to get it across, taken out of the play by Skerban. Backhand pass there from the Czechs. 
Prochaska. There's more loose play going on here than I can remember with the Czechs. They, they don't seem to be quite as, as tight as they were offensively and uh, here defensively. Right up the middle and a good save from Peter Frieza. That's been the story for both teams, hasn't it? Absolutely. Neither one of them can find the back of the net. Here's another chance. Swedes with three men in scoring positions. And again, they blow it. Sweden, though, keeping the pressure on. Berglund going around the back of the net, but the Czechs get it away. Kastak, though, tripped. Another one a little questionable. Basically took his man, and uh, the Czech fell down. It's that one of those. That was a dodgy penalty, really. They ate the same lunch, got the same heartburn, but his antacid is very different. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. That's the one you want. Wharton shifting, moving right in. The shot's now you can learn superstar hockey skills. Hockey with Roger Nielsen from Atlanta's video. Roger Nielsen has brought together Dennis Savard, Mike Gartner, Ron Francis, Greg Milne, Doug Wilson, and Ray Bork to improve your game. You'll learn the fundamentals of puck handling and control, the art of deking, passing and receiving like the pros, superstar shooting skills. There's even a detailed section on breakouts and set plays that create breakaway opportunity. Hockey with Roger Nielsen, with freeze frame and slow-mo replay, plus spectacular highlights of the stars in action, and especially priced at just $19.99. Call toll-free 1-800-453-1500, or send check on money order for $19.99 for each video, plus $4 shipping and handling to Post Office Box 2838-D, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. Sorry, Nick, led you stray there. I thought they were calling a penalty on it. Well, I agree. So did I thought it was a, a penalty coming up there as well, but uh, Ken Holt gets lucky on that occasion, and justice probably done there. So, coming around the back for Rava. Yeah, we talked about them not being tight offensively, and we just saw a defensive lap there where uh, the Czechs got too far apart, and uh, the middle lane opened up. Peter Rosal was the man that went forward there. An impressive run from him, and Rosal got it back again. Loses it, though, this time. Gives it away. Rosal back deep. Kind of clear up and playing some good defensive skills there. And back on the checks with Kastak. Kastak dumping it in. A dump and run game from the checks now. But Kastak loses that battle. Karnback comes away. And another attack down that left side coming in from Sweden. But, uh, Poorly judged pass there. This Swedish team is very much the same team as what they used last year in this tournament. And uh, again, they rely heavily on some of these older players. In fact, uh, uh, Hack and Lube was one of the one of the guys that pulled them out a few games last year. And uh, I just don't know if they can keep relying on these guys year in, year out. It's, you know, it's got to come to an end soon. I suppose the worrying thing for Swedish hockey fans is there doesn't seem to be a lot of young talent coming through. Well, for a number of years, they really produced a lot of players, and there was a mass exodus to North America. A lot of them didn't cut the grade because of the toughness, but uh, they still produce talented players, but they don't seem to be as strong as what they were. Even at the junior levels, they were quite a strong nation. So the Czechs continue to look for the equalizer. I must admit, of the two teams, they look the more likely to score at the moment. Swedes, uh, a hard slap shot coming in from Daniel Ridmark. 20-year-old. Oh. That one dragged across and it's ended up with Tommy Shodin and Shodin gets it in and there's an almighty tangle in front of that Czech goal. And the pressure stays on. Well, the Swedes are taking the game to them. They're, they're tougher in the corners. I remember last year's tournament when they when they were doing well, guys 
we're working hard in the corners and digging down for everything special. And, uh, you know, it's guys like Enstrom that are going to do the job for him. You know, he's a good, strong, big, strong guy. He gets into the corners and he mucks it out. And, uh, he's doing a job right now. Well, Enstrom takes a well-earned rest in the early stages of this second session. This is definitely one of the uh, probably the sloppier games we've seen played. And both teams are, are trying to play a tight checking game, but uh, it's almost like they're just standing off. A couple of good boxers just waiting for something to happen. Peter Herbeck could be in trouble there, the check. Looks very much like a trip. And indeed, Peter Herbeck will sit out two minutes. Unintentional, I think, but not much question about it. No, he went down and... You couldn't call it a dive. So, you know, Sweden are in a position again now. If they can get their power play working, uh, they can find themselves up another goal. And right now, that's what they need. You've got to get this crowd in. You can start to hear them a little bit. Which is good for a change. Nothing worse than playing in your own rink and uh, the crowd goes dead on you. So, power play opportunity then for the Swedes. Well, penalty killing has been the uh, strong point of all the teams in the tournament so far. We'll have to see what Czechoslovakia can do. They did very well against the... Uh, the CIS team have to see now what they can do against uh, Sweden. The Sweden got the old heads and the smart, smart heads and smart hands out there. We're just where they got the legs to carry it through. Well, here's Anderson pressing forward, takes a big hit against the boards. Elderbrink's got to go back and pick this one up for the Swedes. Elderbrink so impressive going forward, the defense man. Well, the Swedes have always had real offensive hockey players, you know, it doesn't matter if the defense or the forward, they always move ahead well with the puck. That's the one thing that seems to be lacking here just now. Well, let's see if uh, they can change that around, but no, it's not, it's the Czechs coming back. I mean, Bjorn Salming, for years, was, you know, the offensive defenseman. He came through the ranks in the days of Bobby Orr, who was a very offensive defenseman. But they don't seem to have one here, and every, every player really needs that type of man from the back. Jelinek ended up on his backside and wasn't too happy about it and said something to our Norwegian referee. I'm sure they won't like that, a Norwegian referee. Well, as we see, it looks like Jelinek has some justification for his grievance. Akan Lou was in front of the net, couldn't get hold of it, Elderbrink has it taken off his stick. And here come the checks once again. Trying to take his man around the outside, but Anderson's got him. And Anderson makes sure he doesn't get away. Peter Anderson, a tough cookie from Malmo. Anderson and Yaneki having a real ding dong there and being separated as well. I think the official did the right thing there. Well, I, I think they should both go off if they're going to send it. I mean, uh, one was a push and one was a punch. And, uh... Well, Anderson and Yaneki getting involved in quite an argy-bargy. That's the first time we've really seen anything quite like that in the, this tournament. And Peter Anderson very unimpressed. Unimpressed with the uh, stiff arm from Otaka Yaneki. Yaneki Anderson gave, goes off, and Yaneki goes off with him. Yaneki gave him quite a shot in the mouth. You know, I mean, uh, well, he's going off too, but that, that's one of those jobs where he, if he'd drawn blood, he could have been a five-minute penalty. As it is, they'll get a two-minute penalty for roughing. First sign of tempers flaring. But at least a bit more intensity coming into the match now. That's what this game needs, really. You know, they've both been standing back and kind of watching each other, and uh, both teams have to play, like you say, with a lot of intensity, and neither one are going to do an awful lot. And here's an opportunity on the breakaway. Robert Lang foiled by Roger Nordstrom. to find a name like Lang or the brother can play. It's Peter Rosal getting involved much more in this game, Rosal, and they need him. The winger, they really need a good performance out of him. He was very disappointing against the CIS, but he's playing with a lot more flair we've come to associate with him. The Czechs aren't playing their, their typical style of uh, attacking and regrouping in the neutral zone. If they don't like it going back into their own their own zone and regrouping there, they, it's uh, 
there just doesn't seem to be a real pattern to what they're doing. It's uh, far more quick attack and, and getting broken up. It's, it's well, it's me out of character for uh, for that hockey team. Well, there's Yuri Slager. He's off for slashing. Also off Daniel Ridmark for roughing. Another bit of argy bargy. We didn't quite catch it. We caught the end of it. So uh, these two teams building up a little bit of heat here at last. Let's see if we can see it now from our overhead. Well, that was a good hit. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, that's probably what's got things going. Of course, he took oh. the two-hander at the goalie after two. That's right. And uh, I don't think Rid Ridmark liked what he saw. Decided to take the law into his own hands. But the bottom line is, we're still separated by just the one goal. Mats Naslund's early strike in the first period, and the Czechs have gone almost five periods of play without getting a goal. Well, they've had the chances. They, they've been on top of the Swedish goalie. They, uh, well, obviously, they scored at the end of the period, which didn't count, but, I mean, that's the only marker they've had so far. But chances will come. I think they're starting to work a little bit better. So, Sweden out, out shooting the Czechs 12-5 in that second period, but nobody was able to get on the score sheet, so it remains 1-0 in favour of Sweden after two periods of play. Mats Naslund's goal, the only score of the match. We'll be back for the start of the third period in just a moment. Baseball fans, don't miss the new series, Baseball Greatest Games. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. I don't believe what I just saw. Baseball's Greatest Games will bring you the most amazing performances, along with the most incredible victories. Greg Dutto and look at those Yankees. Plus, all the glory of the World Series. Baseball's greatest games isn't just highlights. It's the complete game. When the baseball season ends, baseball's greatest games begin. Each week, a different baseball classic. There it goes, a long drive. If it stays fair, home run. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standard, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a diehard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Who's going to back it better than Sears? Welcome back to so not going with a fourth period of this. Fourth checks they failed to score in their Swedish pre Olympic ice hockey tournament. And Alex, there must have been some very serious soul searching going on in the Czech uh, locker room during that second intermission. Well, I, I don't know how much the coach can actually say to, uh, to the players in regards to going to Albertville. Uh, but the way that some of them are playing, they, they, I don't think they deserve to go anywhere other than home. But, you know, possibly there's, it's a set team and uh, they're assured of a place. I'm sure the Swedes are in a position where if you're not playing tonight, you could get drafted, uh, another player drafted in. So both teams, I would think, are in in a position to be changed uh, so you know if the Czechs want to work at it and work hard and go to Elberville then they better do something in the third period yeah, it's all to play for for both teams really a disappointing game it has to be said so far both of them played well in their losing efforts in their opening matches and I think we expected a bit more from them than we're getting so far well I thought the Czechs were starting to pick it up a little bit in the second period they're starting to freewheel a bit more the way you expect them to handling the puck moving it making things happen uh, I think the Swedes have got, were gone, had gone a little flat, but hard to say what will happen after this period. And the Swedes coming up with an attack of their own. Back on Lube, unable to get that one pass to be the breezer. But certainly the intensity level's been turned up a little bit. We saw that, and there's more evidence of that. A real bust up down on the boards. Well, that's it. The Czechs are still going on. Those two, that's uh, Gudas and Runquist getting involved. And the Czechs are starting to hit a bit, which is something I think we'll have to do. There's no way they can stand back and let the, the Swedes push them around. They were involved in that big collision behind the net. Leo Gudas and Thomas Runquist are still going at it, and both of them will be able to calm down a little bit for a couple of minutes. Well, Runquist is a veteran. He's been around a while. He's bounced around North America, and he's been around Europe. You know, I, I don't think he's going to take any nonsense, but uh, the Czechs really have to put themselves about it. I think they're a bigger team. 
and uh, I would think they're probably uh, a little bit more physical. But they're certainly not showing it here now. They, they showed it against the CIS. They went, you know, they matched body to body for the for the uh, CIS team. There's Thomas Rundquist. I think we'll see that the penalty on him is for roughing, which is going to be the fate of Leo Gudas as well. There he is. Berkman will sit it out. one nothing still Sweden. But the Czechs coming out with a little bit of aggression here in this third period. I think the disappointing thing from the Swedish point of view is that how well they played against Canada. You know, they dominated the game, uh, created a lot of good chances, looked really strong offensively, and then all of a sudden they come out here and they look absolutely flat. Well, the third line is out for the Czechs. Some drama behind the Czech goal. They survive, and now they look to build again. Taking it around, all the way around the back of the net. Just thwarted there.